So in this question, we have a charged isolated metal sphere with a certain diameter, and it has a certain potential, and we are asked to calculate the energy density. Now the symbol for energy density used in this chapter is this letter U here, and we can see that energy density is equal to one half times a constant times the electric field squared. So we actually need to come up with an expression for the electric field at the surface of this sphere. So that becomes the greatest challenge of this question. Now from previous chapters we learned that the electric field at the surface of a charged metal sphere is equal to the following constant which you may recognize as K in some cases they write it that way in the textbook. So basically you have this constant multiplied by the charge on the sphere divided by its radius squared. The problem here is we don't directly know the charge on the sphere, so we need to introduce another equation. And that equation tells us that the potential at the surface of the sphere is equal to, again, a constant, which is sometimes represented as K, multiplied by the charge divided by the radius of the sphere. So it turns out we can combine these two equations to come up with a suitable expression for the electric field at the surface of the sphere. And to do that, we would divide these two equations. So if you divide the equations, you're going to get electric field E divided by electric potential V equals. Now, when you divide the equations, these two constant values are going to cancel out. And that leaves you with Q over R squared divided by Q over R. And to simplify this complex fraction, we can use the principle of keep, change, flip. And that principle tells us to keep the first fraction in the same orientation, so Q over R squared, change division to multiplication, and then flip the other fraction, so it becomes R over Q. And conveniently, the Qs will cancel out here. So now we have electric field over electric potential equals R divided by R squared. Of course, we can simplify the right side by canceling a factor of R. So this becomes one, and then this becomes just R in the denominator. So we have electric field over electric potential equals one divided by radius. Finally, multiply both sides of this equation by the electric potential V, which cancels on the left side. And we can see now that the electric field is simply the electric potential divided by the radius of the sphere. So this expression for the electric field, this V over R, is what we need to substitute into our energy density equation. So we will have the energy density is equal to one-half times a constant multiplied by the electric field, which again, we just derived was V divided by R. Don't forget that the electric field is squared, so we will still square this value here. And now we're ready to plug in the known values. We know that this constant epsilon subscript naught has a value of 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, and then it has this unit of coulombs squared over newton meters squared. And we're gonna have to clean up the workspace here. Why don't we just get rid of this for now? And then we'll multiply by the electric potential V, which is given as 8,000 volts divided by the radius. Now be careful here a little bit. The diameter is 10 centimeters, so you're going to have to divide that by two to get a radius of five centimeters. But then also we have to convert the centimeters into meters. So you'll have five multiplied by 10 to the minus two, which converts the radius into meters. And then also don't forget to square it. So we'll pick up our calculators and punch this in. And when you do so, you should get an energy density of approximately 0.11. And the unit of energy density is joules per meter cubed. It's a little bit hard to see how that comes about, frankly, with all the units in our calculation, but it does come out to the standard unit of joules per meter cubed. So this is the correct answer to the question.